Uh, Judy from Georgia, what does the Bible say about cremation? Uh, it, the Bible states that when we are through with these flesh bodies, they go back to dust. Doesn't matter how they get there. I want you to make a note of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 3. I'm going to say it again. 1 Corinthians 13, 3, that, um, a, a, which approves of cremation. Uh, Marvin from Minnesota. In Ezekiel, who is Gog and Magog? It, it, go back to Ezekiel chapter 38, verses 1 and 3, the chief prince, Meshach. Chief prince is Rush, R-O-S-H, in the Hebrew manuscripts, which later by the Volga would be called Rush, R-U-S-S, and today is Russia. So Gog and Magog are places in Russia itself, in the north country. Uh, Randall from New Mexico. What does caught up mean in Thessalonians? It means exactly that, that at the seventh trump and not until you are changed into a higher level of being, meaning a spiritual body. The word air, as it is utilized, has nothing to do. It's the Greek 109 in your Greek dictionary, Strong's Concordance. It means breath of life. It means your spiritual body, not atmosphere. It means you're changed into a spiritual body. Michael from Nevada. How can I be saved? How can I be sure I have eternal salvation? Well, John 3.16, God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son, only one, that whomsoever would believe upon him, that's the, that, that is the requirement, believe on him, should not perish, meaning you're saved, and are given, the word is eternal, uh, everlasting, but it, it means more than that. It means from the time you were created in the first earth age to the very eternity itself, there's never any point that you stop existing when you believe on him. Why? Well, because God is the God of the living, not the dead. And, and so it is. Read the last four verses of St. John chapter 8. Sue from Kentucky. Pastor Murray, can you tell me what is the correct way to pray? I pray to God every night, but I feel like I repeat myself. Well, uh, it's, it's okay to repeat a prayer if you're still asking for it, but you simply talk to him just like you would to anyone else. God is very intelligent, and he, he wants you to talk to him. Don't make some ritual out of praying that you go into some kind of uh, dialogue. Visit with him. That's what prayer is. Let him know you love him and that you appreciate him. And if, if there's something that you're praying for, uh, it, it doesn't hurt every once in a while if you're praying for peace and he's given it to you. Thank him for it. He, he so very much enjoys people thanking him for being there for them. You know, too, too many people, it's always gimme, 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 gimme. It's never, Father, I love you and I thank you for the blessings you've given me. That, that makes his day. So you just talk to him, and you know something? You're natural. He is supernatural, meaning he's more natural. You like it when people tell you they love you. You like it when people appreciate what you do for them. Well, so does he. So don't, don't think you're repeating. Just talk to him. Have a good, nice dialogue with him. And always do it in the name of Yeshua Messiah, Jesus the Christ. Uh, Monty from Tennessee. My nephew has passed away, and his organs were donated to cancer research, and his body was cremated. Do you think this was right? If that was his request, it was right. That's, that's what he wanted, and so it is. Perhaps people, some blind person now has sight, and, and so on and so forth. It, so that it was a gift that he wanted them to have. And he's in his new spiritual body in in uh, paradise uh, and uh, how, how blessed it is uh, there's nothing at all wrong with cremation many people and, and 
with um, the economy being what it is, it's the wise thing to do in many cases uh, because it's a lot less expensive. A cremation is and um, and so forth rather than uh, a, a funeral service that could run into the thousands of dollars. Uh, Dan from Georgia. Pastor Murray, if the scriptures say the soul that sinneth will die, how is it that people preach that your soul will go to heaven or hell? Well, you're judged and judged fairly and accurately. If, if you're a sinner and repent, you're not going to die. So, therefore, that's up to you. It isn't, God is, doesn't go, get up every morning and look for somebody to zap. Like, I wonder how many I can zap today and make the world a happy place. Well, he wants to, God is long-suffering, meaning he's got lots of patience. And I'm quoting from Second Peter chapter 3 along about verse 7 or 8. He's long-suffering, and it is his will that all come to repentance. When you repent, those sins are washed. They're gone. It didn't, it, they don't exist. And he says, don't ever talk to me about it again. Okay. Don't forget, but um, whether you go to heaven or hell is your choice, not God's, okay? Because you're going to get what you deserve. He's always fair. So you do what's right, and you're heaven-bound. You do what's wrong, and I don't have to tell you. Lyle from Utah.